Now, let's start putting in some fur, really giving some dimension to this animal. And then, of course, as I say, it's all about comparison and uh, contrast. So let's get our color for the golden retriever, the hair, the fur, which is going to be kind of. Now, this is a number 12 sable brush that I've used a couple of times. The reason I bring it up now is because it, once I load it up with the paint, it really splays out and fills up. So um, the capacity of this brush to hold paint is, is really pretty amazing. Um, I think I want to put a little more burnt sienna in there because I'm still kind of doing the undercoat. And uh, so we're just going to kind of be a little more painterly with our strokes on here. A little bit of dry brush. Want to follow the the shape of the dog and the direction of the hair growth, because that's just another one of the things that kind of. Now we'll keep this the local color um, where it is because we can use that as we branch off into the lights, and so we're still keeping our strokes and got this kind of collar edge coming up here and so this brush is so loaded I'm just going to kind of move it up here and with each layer of these acrylics it's just smoother and smoother in application it's really quite nice to work with doing fur is really a lot of fun because it's kind of short strokes that kind of blend into to other things. We're not getting into any real specifics about the fur itself. Just I want to kind of get the lay of the land down. So, and then the more we do, we do this uh, modeling around the face, and of course the more the personality of the dog comes through, and that's always really cool. So, let's see indicate our chin fur, which is, which is what that is. And the, of course, the other thing about acrylic is if you put something down and it's, you messed up, you just wipe it off and it doesn't matter. Acrylics are pretty forgiving on many levels. Okay, so just continuing to model on up the side, the ear. And you don't, as, you don't do the detail in every little part of the, of the animal. You do detail where you really need it, where the, the focus is, and then you let the eye do the rest. But you have to do enough detail that there's no doubt about the kind of fur, how the fur lays, because all those things are indicative of the species that you're painting. Okay, so we're just going to model this run up here, like so. And now we're getting into, looks like we're starting to ascertain the shape around this big black thing, which we could call the nose. And that's kind of going around, so we want to get that in there. Then, and the brushes that you use really do matter. It does make a difference. Okay, so we go up here, and another shape here. Ooh, and eye, the eyebrows are really, dog's eyes are so expressive. So we're going to paint all this up here. If you can see where I'm going with this. around the other eye. This, this area right here just moves around all the time. That's kind of what tells you what the dog is thinking. That's where you get your messages. And pull this up here. And it just gets richer and richer and richer. Okay, and of course that little cradle area 
on the top of the head. Bring this down. Okay. And all right. Now while that's kind of settling in, oop, gonna put some dark where the mustache, the uh, whiskers go, <laughs> the mustache. <laughs> uh, well, we could put a mustache on this dog, do something different. And you could if you wanted to, because it's your painting. But for the sake of, of um, being as specific as possible, we won't do that here. Okay, but I am just going to kind of make that a little, a little darker. All right, let's go back to the, mm, let's go back to the mouth area. We want to kind of give the tongue a little punch. So we're just going to give it another coat of the pink. If that's what you want to do, you want to jump around from area to area. And as we do this, what we're doing is, is, a, is becoming more opaque, just like I said it does. Okay, I want to catch the point of that again, because the acrylics are really so, so rich. And I'm also using, because I'm trying to go for the detail, I'm using a softer brush to do that. And I've been just going back and forth between the brushes that I've been telling you about. Oh, that's kind of one up around the mouth. A little wavy tongue. Okay. All right, I'm going to go a little bit lighter. like so. I think with acrylics you have to be a little more specific about where you're gonna where you're putting your color just a little bit more and then you can blend it. But it's just modeling and building the layers that really makes the difference um, that you need to do with the wildlife because you've got to build layers with the fur. You can't just use one layer and have fur. You're going to have to build a foundation. Okay, so this is just softening up some of that tongue area. Could put final highlights in later. Um, okay, so I think we can go back down here and go back into some more modeling of the fur, kind of closing down on, um, on the structure of the dog, and get a little more specific with it, but we've got to put a lot of water in here. So let's get that in there, and I'm still using that number three because I'm getting a little more into the, into the detail, except down here, that's not too terribly detailed. Okay, so what I'm going to be careful to do at this point is make sure that my brush comes to a nice point when I'm finished with the stroke because what I'm doing is actually stating the beginning of one cluster of fur and the end of another. So this way it just kind of, one stroke is going to paint both the fur above it or below it. And you can tell that more as you start to add the different layers or the, the lighter colors. So let's just work our way. And of course the strokes are going to be a little bit larger, a little bit wider, because you're on the larger part of the dog. And there's some areas here that we're going to have to um, make a little bit darker too. But that can easily be done. So, 
We just also want to make sure we keep our darks and lights stated so that you can keep the shape of the animal in intact. Keep the integrity of that going. And so I'm just really kind of jumping around here. Now we're getting up around the neck. So we just want to, it's going to squint it down. You want to squint everything you paint so that you can actually see the lights and the darks. You contrast the shapes. All the things that you need to do. Now there's some dark areas in here. I'm, I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm going to stick with the color that I'm working on because we'll come back in and we'll restate those and so we're getting down to some serious fur here and that's a lot of paint I'm picking up too because you really want to keep that nice flow going so you got to work back into the into your medium and your paint to keep that going. And really when you come in with the final lights, that's where it's really gonna get up in there and make the final shapes and just wipe that away. Um, let's see, what are we doing here? And if, depending on what kind of a, an animal you're painting, that's going to be your stroke for the fur. A chihuahua is not going to have the same stroke as, as a golden retriever. Or a poodle. Okay, so we're going to do this. And the beauty of all this is we could come back in with a glaze and go on top of it and just continue to, to add solidity to the whole piece. Now I'm just kind of kind of working this same area. I'm going to go back in the same area and go ahead and put the darks while I'm here, pull a bit of blue. My palette tends to get a little bit messier with the acrylics because you have to work so quickly. And uh, so I'm going to come in here. to go even darker. And it's the paint is so thick on the brush that you can see that it's really caring a lot, which is really luscious, just like oils. Okay, and then so there are little areas here that are just kind of where the separations in the fur are. So we'll get those, move them up here kind of go into the zone. And bring it around. Come in here, up underneath the chin. Oop, darker. So just pull a bit more of that ultramarine blue. So many shades of dark that you can get just by using that. Now I'm going to be a little more specific here and just sort of Do this, and now we're coming in down here, because the hair underneath the dog's chin, a golden retriever's chin, can be pretty long. And put this here. Okay, go back in here, state this, which is kind of like the goatee of a dog. Can blend that in a little bit more. And but coming in with the lights is always fun. Okay, this is where it gets a little hairy here. We're making that indication of the hair fur. All right, now that sloppy jowl, we're going to leave that like it is. Now let's come into the side here. This is really more of a shadow that's happening here, but that's okay. It's shadow on the fur. It's kind of vary the, the length of your brush stroke. 
and we want to pull this up next to the next to the lip. And with the acrylics, like as I'm overlapping this, it's just uh, it just every, makes everything blend in so nicely. Um, so we're going to come on around here, like so, and create that shadow underneath the ear. And then we're going to come over to the other side. Oops, let's go back up under the nose here. Go ahead and make those little shapes, those little dark shapes where the whiskers grow out of. Now let's get some dark around this. The tongue. And up here. And around like so. Just pushing the paint around, that's all it is. And pull some more of this. A little bit of dark. See the paint's already started to dry on the on the palette. Uh, okay, got that now. We're gonna come in here. That's really nice and dark. A little bit there. Now, let's see. Oh, good. we're going to the other ear. And then we're going to start pulling in some... We might go over that um, fur just a little bit with a color just slightly darker. But we're really... It's, it, some, lots of times I find that when I'm painting, especially wildlife because it does take so long. It is so labor intensive. And you do paint it because you really love nature and it's very important to you that people learn about different species because we are truly all interconnected. Uh, what I find is that the longer I paint on something um, or as the painting progresses, um, there comes a point where you think, oh, you know, when is it going to be through? When is it? And then suddenly it's through. So, uh, so it's really kind of cool. It's like it takes on a life of its own. And then there's nothing else to do. So you quit. And you move on to something else. Okay, so just want to make sure that we get the direction of the fur going. And I think we've got everything going as far as what the dog is. We've got that figured out. Now, all right, so we get just a little more of this dark mixture of color here. And go in here. Oh, that's good, that's good. And then when we come in with the lights, we're going to be ready. Okay, so I'm just going to make some strokes there. And here, because the fur on the ear is very soft, too. And <clears throat> come over here, and okay, now we're starting to get some modeling done. And then we can have fun with the light, because that's kind of what we're going for.